Hello! Today we're gonna talk about pulse dividers. It's a component that you kind of often need to use in your machines and I actually haven't found any good resource or collection of pulse dividers. Half of those I just came up on my own and others I just saw in other people's machines but never published separately. And uh, I have never seen anybody talk about pulse dividers and they are s such a useful component in designing machines that I thought that it should be useful for someone else to have a collection like this. So what am I talking about? Let's say you have a clock. Let's just build a clock here. And this could represent the clock inside your machine timing something or uh, maybe some longer cycle of your machine. I don't know, pushing cobblestone or whatever it does. And uh, you don't want the thing that is being clocked to happen every time the clock ticks. So maybe you have one part of the machine that should run every time the clock ticks and another part of the machine that should run maybe just every other time. So the standard pulse divider that I've been using forever is this one. Um, you just have a sticky piston, right? And uh, an observer. And if we put a note block here, so it makes noise. No noise now, noise. No noise, noise. This is what the pulse divider is. It divides a clock signal by a certain number. And uh, this is the standard one that divides by two ticks. I have a slightly better demonstration here. So uh, the row here in the world download, you will see the, the front row contains just the pure machines that uh, don't do anything else. And uh, the iron block is touching whatever block you need to power as the input. And the gold block is where the output should be. And actually that's a mistake because the output should be there. And I'll explain in a second why. So this is the standard divide by two clock pulse divider. Nothing particularly exciting for anybody, but we can see that I have a special script running. And this script uh, you will find in the world download the scripts folder. It's a Scarpet script. So if you're using the carpet mod, you can use it. If you don't use it, you should probably remove the command blocks. Otherwise you will get spam from commands. But if we looked at the output from the script, there are two different timers or uh, frequency analyzers or whatever we want to call them. And uh, they say how long it was since the previous time that we got a pulse. So the first one is here. The script is called C metrics tick first. And uh, this one here does C metrics ticks second and first. The first here tells us that the script should report how long after the first tick that we got the second tick. Uh, the problem here is that the script is very, very stupid. So the delay measurement only works if you do it very carefully. Now you can see that, that this output pulse comes four ticks after, because that could be a concern if you are uh, designing a machine. These can of course be chained, but there is a little bit of dodginess here. I said that the output must be when this observer is extended from the sticky piston because we can see what happens here. Uh, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of locational or directional. I am not exactly sure. I don't know if this one, yeah, this one does not power. You cannot hear any sound. But if we put the gold block here, we are getting a sound. So I have found that it is always reliable if we have the observer and take the signal when the observer is moved out from the sticky piston, but when it moves back, it's not reliable. It becomes reliable if you slow down the input. But I have a sign here that says this divides the input by two, and uh, we can input signals with a four tick delay, and uh, the delay between sending the input in, so between this piston and this command block being powered, and this command block and an alt block being powered, the delay there is four ticks. And these can, of course, be chained. Uh, we have a super ugly chain here, which we can see in action. The first uh, report from the second ticker thing is inaccurate, but we will see in a second how fast this reacts, and I'm trying to be ready to turn it off. 
pum, 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 pum. there we go 256 ticks so this divides the signal by 64 but you can chain them as far as possible and if you want to chain them slightly uh, cleanly this is probably the best layouts i can offer you uh, there are probably much better layouts but this is the, the quickest you can't do something like this it might be tempting to 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 try it might be tempting to try something like this, but now this observer will be first observing this observer moving, and then this observer will also see this piston moving. So there has to be some gap between them. You can pack them tighter by twisting them around, but I don't know. This is very, very ugly. Now, this is standard division by two. Pretty much everybody knows how to do it. But if I showed you something new, congratulations. Now, this is a divider by three, and I think, I'm not sure, but I think it was designed by Ilmango. I have seen Ilmango use it in quite a few of his designs, but I don't think he has ever published a guide for it, and if he has, I have never been able to find it. Um, some things can be actually hard to find. And uh, this one divides the pulse by three. We can see it in action here. So the clock this can only accept a six tick input clock, otherwise there are issues. It, it can theoretically work with four, but it really doesn't. It, that's that's the simple answer. It, it, it gets weird, the observer doesn't uh, pulse in the right moments, so uh, I wouldn't recommend it. And uh, the reason why this works is that this dust powers both of these pistons at the same time. The pistons extend in the same tick but it is always reliable which one gets powered first and which one gets powered second we can see here how it works so if i power this this piston pushed the observer out and that piston looked like it kind of would be able to catch the observer but it wasn't able to because uh, this piston started retracting before this piston stopped pushing and now this piston grabbed this observer before that piston was able to grab the observer. And this happens reliable. You can power it from the other side if you want. And it should also be reliable no matter which side you power it from. And uh, this one divides the pulses by three. It uh, can be clocked by a six tick clock. You shouldn't run it faster. And it has six input delay between powering the dust and this signal arriving to the block here. Now, you don't have to have the dust above here. You can have the dust on the back as well. You can arrange the dust however you want. It just You just need to be powering these pistons with the same pulse. Now, uh, those two are simple. And uh, with uh, dividing by two and dividing by three, you can already make a lot of other dividers by just chaining them. So you can uh, now do 6, now you can do 12, you can even do 9 and 27 and any multiple of 3 and 2. But what if you want to divide by other numbers? Well, I have developed a special variant of this pulse divider that I needed a kind of compact... I, I, it was just a challenge for myself actually because it's not strictly necessary, this machine doesn't need to exist. But I invented a variant of this thing that can divide by five. It works like this. So you can see that we are ticking it with eight ticks. I don't think six ticks work. Have I written? Yeah, eight tick input uh, is the fastest possible. And there is a six tick delay between powering the dust here and uh, this block here being powered. So uh, like you can see, there is the output block here. And as you can see, it's kind of tight here and awkward, and it's kind of hard to arrange things here. Uh, and it's kind of hard to arrange things here so that they fit and don't power things accidentally next to each other. Uh, the input on this machine has to come from this side. It will not work if you power it from this side. And the way this works, so, this is the first. This powered this block here and powered this piston, which moves this block in and cuts off the dust. So the signal doesn't go to the second piston. Now, if we click it again, 
it moves back rather than the free divider it would move to this side but here it moved back because the, the dust was cut off now we click this again that removes the block and that allows this piston to steal it let's see this again this is the first position second position cuts off the dust it moves back third position fourth position and fifth position now this i haven't tested very thoroughly i know it works in this orientation but it could be directional positional so be careful and test properly in your machines and like i said eight tick uh, input clock at best i think i got it to work with six ones but it wasn't reliable and it's a six tick delay on the output and now you can divide anything by any multiple of two three and five but what if you want to divide by more well we have this thing here uh, this is also something i just threw together one day uh, just uh, because i needed a divider by a very large number and uh, it works like this So it can only be timed by a 10 tick clock. It cannot run faster. Uh, you could actually run it faster and it will seem to work, but it will not divide the signal correctly. And as you can see here, uh, the pulses are coming 10 ticks apart and the second pulse is coming 60 ticks apart because there are total three items in the droppers here. So what is happening here is that we are powering this line of dust and the line of dust gets redirected to one of the droppers through this target block and where the target block is is uh, controlled by these pistons which are powered by the comparators here through this torch and this is similar idea to the etho hopper clock but well as you can see it's different now the way we extract the signal here the best way is to use a falling edge detector because uh, it turns out it's kind of hard like even though this mechanism seems simple and and relatively easy to understand it is kind of hard to extract a good signal from it uh, the simplest you can probably do is is just to have an observer here powering a sticky piston with an observer here and extracting the signal here that should work you can see how this will work but this actually gives you a bigger delay than this one. So this one is a falling edge detector. Uh, if you don't know how these work, we have a block here, a torch, a block above, and here we can actually put a note block if we want, or a powered rail or an activator rail. And this thing will only activate when we are turning things off, so. Like that, it's a falling edge detector. This, this thing divides the input by two times the number of items in here, because we are only observing on one side, has a, a 10 tick input at the fastest and eight tick delay. So this should work for all even numbers, but what if you want to do 11? or 7, or 13, or 127. Well, then uh, this thing. It is bulky, unfortunately. It works exactly like this one, except that we are observing on both sides. And here I am using actually a note block as the falling edge detector. And here I am using a power drill as a falling edge detector just to show that it's possible. And uh, this thing should work as well. So we're seeing a 10 tick inputs and 70 tick outputs so it is dividing by seven and if we look in the droppers the number of items is actually oh we got it perfectly the number of items is seven i hope this can be useful for your machine designs i am not in no way claiming that this is an exhaustive list of all kinds of pulse dividers Th these are pulse dividers that i have found useful and uh, i wanted to share them with you that's it. Also remember, they are only really working on pulses that come from observers. If you have a repeater like this, 
you're, you will confuse your pulse divider, so, so don't do that. Or translate this signal into a single tick signal, like this. Anyway, hope this was useful for you. Uh, there will be a world download in the description as usual. Thanks a lot for watching and have good pulse dividing. Bye.